Uh-oh, that went well. Just you wait, because I'm gonna make you regret prejudging this vlog. There's a sticker. Get the sticker off the stick. Oh, little. Can you see that? It's pink inside, like a lady. It's a Lucy Rose apple. If you're from Toronto, I got the Lucy Rose from Longo's. It tastes like an expensive apple. Apparently you're supposed to eat the wasabi to kill anything that might kill you first. Wasabi! Harder to kill. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Beanie McBeanie Pants. I'm not sponsored by Royal Cannon, but god damn do I wish. Post-op day nine is looking fine. Yeah, that's much more convenient than eating the ones I put on the floor. This is Coco, she's a blue point Siamese. And this is Bean, he's a cream point Siamese. They have the same father. Bean's the brother from another mother. My friend Elisa told me that Bean looks like the queen. I got his citrus cone on Amazon, the website, not the rainforest. This is the self-grooming center. You just tape a brush to the wall. Can you fit with the cone? Come on, just just ram it in, ram it in. Bean was vomiting bile for two days, so I took him to the vet and he had an exploratory surgery, I don't know. It was a bit of a rough patch there for a while with Bean, but now he's finally drinking and eating and pooping. Oh, he did it, he got inside the pumpkin. Let me show you the view outside my window here, hold on. It's pretty cold here in Toronto in January. motion squats. I mean, obviously you do them, but I thought they were a no-no for the knees. Curious of the pros and cons and your input as you clearly are an expert at focusing on building a strong body safely. Dana, this is a great question. So I recommend that you respect your current mobility and squat within it. So let's take a look at how my mobility was in 2016 and we'll compare that to where it is now in 2022. And this will help you understand exactly what I'm talking about. About, out and about, hey. This was me in 2016. You can see the pain in my face. I'm wearing knee sleeves to try to protect myself and I'd already taken a couple Tylenols. I had severe right knee pain. So you can see me shifting more to the left side and you can see me bearing more weight through the left leg. Now, the squats were not the cause of the knee pain, rather they were just exacerbating it. The root cause of the problem, the cause of the pain and the poor mobility was because I had no deep core strength. The deep core is called the transverse abs, your TVA. This is your body's primary stabilizer. And if you cannot engage this muscle and it's weak, this is going to cause imbalances everywhere else in your body, hence the knee pain, poor mobility, shoulder problems, and back pain. 
this is me in 2022. I'm like a totally different person here. And that's because I took the time to build the structure in very important stabilizing muscles in the body, such as the TBA and the lats. And this is what keeps me safe and gives me the permission slip to move through full range of motion. So to answer Dana's question, yes, in my case, in 2022, it's safe for me to squat ass to grass without developing knee pain because I have the structure, stability, and mobility for this. But in 2016, it's very clear that I did not have the structure, stability, and mobility and that that was actually exacerbating my knee pain. We truthfully know when we're pushing ourselves deeper into ranges of motion that we have no business going into. Your body gives you instant feedback and it's because you start using incorrect movement patterns to try to MacGyver into a deeper position. And that's a recipe for injury. So if your back hurts or your knee hurts or you tear your proximal hamstring or you start to notice you have a really huge overdeveloped upper trap, it's because now you're training compensation patterns. You're using the wrong muscles for the job and that's why you're getting hurt. The solution here is to fix the root cause of the problem. So the whole principle upon which I have built my Strength Academy program and my Splits program is this. Ready? Pay attention. You cannot build mobility on an imbalanced body. And that's what my problem was back in 2016. I had so many imbalances. So my only way to try and make it seem like I had mobility would be to literally force myself and hurt myself. So. Stop doing that, tell your ego to take a cigarette break, and rather, the key here is to take the time to earn the mobility by fixing the root cause of the problem, the imbalances. So just because you can't squat ass to grass today doesn't mean that it's not in the cards for you. I mean, back in 2016, I would have been voted the least likely person to be able to squat pain-free ass to grass with load. But the reality is I just did my time. I literally spent four to five years building the structure and stability in my core, and that's what gave me the permission slip to be able to improve my mobility. So I'm about to turn 44 on January 25th. I was born in 78, in case you're watching this like two years from now. Um, and one thing that I'm just so grateful for is mobility. I'm so grateful that I did my time to earn mobility because this just makes my quality of life so much better. Like I was scared that I was gonna be that person with a four wheeled walker. I was in a pretty bad place with all of my aches and pains. And so this was the ultimate act of self care to actually fix the root cause of the problem. And in the process, I became something beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought I'd be able to do the things I can do today with my body. So if you're frustrated with the fact that your mobility never increases and you're always injured and you have to take painkillers to get through your workouts, trust me, that used to be me. I, I, know, I know what you're going through. The best advice I can give you based on my four year experience here is to tell your ego to fuck off and get to work on balancing your body. That's what's going to solve the problem and turn you into exactly what your future vision is of yourself, which is an excellent mover with great mobility and great abilities, being able to live the life that you wanna live without having to pop painkillers. And this is exactly what I teach inside my Strength Academy. It's also the same philosophy I teach inside my splits program. You know, time is gonna pass anyway. So use it wisely. Either what you're doing right now is feeding your problems or it's fixing them. Choose wisely. Happy New Year, 2022. Is it just me or does this January feel totally different than all previous Januaries? In fact, this is the first January in 10 years that I didn't do a New Year's marketing campaign. Why not? It just didn't feel right to me this time. I mean, I know what went into my physical and mental transformation in the past decade and none of it had anything to do with New Year's resolutions. So I wanna say this to you, hoping it helps you exhale a big sigh of relief. There's no timeline for health. You will know when it's your time to seriously get started. I started a new approach to diet, intermittent fasting, in August of 2012. In fact, that's probably why a lot of you follow me. Now, I said August 2012. I didn't say January 2012. Why August? Because that's when I hit 
rock bottom. I was starving myself, I was a slave to cardio, and I was gaining weight. I didn't like the person I had become, and it was my own doing. I caused all these problems. I knew that I needed to make a change, and that just happened to be in August. It was like my snap out of it moment. You know in the movie Moonstruck when Cher slaps Nicolas Cage in the face? Snap out of it! Similarly, I started my movement transformation journey in November of 2016, not a January 1st. In my opinion, New Year's resolutions, January 1st, this is not a catalyst for profound intent. In both of my cases, I needed to hit rock bottom. I was in severe knee pain, back pain, I had a jacked up left shoulder, and the final straw that broke the camel's back was having an excruciating rib injury. I did not like who I had become by my own doing. It was time to snap out of it. It was time for me to take action and do something about it. So there are three things that you can say to yourself every morning when you look at yourself in the mirror. In fact, I do this as part of my daily practice. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's hard. It can be painful when you see your truth. Number one, I did this shit to myself. Repeat after me, I did this shit to myself. It takes a lot of self-awareness to take ownership for your current circumstances. You can't just blame everybody else for it or turn a willful blind eye. Well, you can turn a willful blind eye to it, but then you risk becoming a crippled version of Dorian Gray who's pushing around a four-wheeled walker and who's overweight and has destroyed every single relationship that they've ever been in. Hold on, I'm thirsty. Batman, da, 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 da. I had to stop making excuses like, oh, well, it's normal to piss yourself when you jump rope, or, oh, it's normal not to be able to have a vaginal orgasm, or, oh, it's normal to have knee and back pain as you age, or, oh, it's normal to turn a willful blind eye in relationships and just let those red flags pile up until they become a great big red tent. And here's where the problem was. I kept making excuses to fit the story that I wanted to see. We do this shit to ourselves. We have nobody to blame but ourselves. Number two, if I died today, would I be satisfied with my life? Say it with me. If I died today, would I be satisfied with my life? So what actions are you going to take today and tomorrow and the next day so that you can overcome your shit and not die with regrets. Number three, am I acting from an adolescent or an adult space? You know, this is one that you need to literally ask yourself every time you react to something. Are you acting from an adolescent or an adult space? I'd say our biggest problem today is that we're all a bunch of big fucking babies. What are you willing to struggle for to get what you want in life? Nothing worth having comes without sacrifice, pain, and delayed gratification. Look at how long it took me to have a movement transformation. I've been going at this since November 2016, okay? This did not happen in one month, or one year, or even three years. It's a process, and I show up for myself every single day, and I'm gonna do that until the day I die. All the stuff you see me doing on social media, none of it has come easy for me. I started from worse than rock bottom. I was a painful, crooked, imbalanced mess. But I committed to showing up every single day to make small 1% improvements. And let me tell you, those little 1% improvements sure do have a cumulative effect over time. Here's what's really cool about this transformation I've had. My training practice has taught me how to get good at tackling hard shit. And it has helped me identify when I'm being a big fucking baby. And that in and of itself has helped me transform into an adult. I really believe that your training practice is a mirror for everything else that is going on in your life. And your training practice is an opportunity for you to hone life skills. Improving movement patterns is not 
easy and I'm telling you the truth, okay? Nothing came easy for me. You can't rely on talent for this. You have to rely on your willingness to consistently show up. You need to be patient, committed, and honest. Now, if you had told me back in 2016 that I would be able to do the splits, handstands, ring muscle ups, pole dancing, all of this stuff, I honestly wouldn't have believed you. And what I've learned on this journey is that all the outcomes are actually possible as long as you don't quit, as long as you believe in your future vision of yourself. So what I've learned is that any outcome that doesn't happen instantly, it actually boils down to your mindset. And so that's what I spend a lot of time teaching inside my Strength Academy, mindset development. Because if you have the right mindset, you can become the future vision you have of yourself and more. And I'm proof of that. And everybody's always like, oh, well, how long does it take? Well, we know the famous strong fit quote, as long as it takes. But in my opinion, and I'm just saying this based on witnessing my own transformation, the longer it takes, the better. And you're like, huh, what, huh? Here, let me tell you why. Because the longer it takes, the more opportunity you have to develop your mindset, to develop grit, to learn. Think about how much I've learned in the process of trying to overcome setbacks that I've had over the years. So I really feel that the longer it takes, the better. That's what's gonna turn you into a challenge tackling machine. You know, if you were to get on my rings right now and do a ring muscle up the first time you tried it, it would mean absolutely nothing to you and no learning would take place. But my story is that it took me, you know, almost five years to get my ring muscle up. So you better believe this is something that means a lot to me and it made me realize that it really wasn't so much about the ring muscle up as it was about the person I became along the way. I mean, do you think I'm the same person I was back in 2016? Oh, fuck no. Okay, I got a message and my laundry's done and I need a quick sip of water. Like, dude, I have worked my ass off to become more balanced physically, emotionally, sexually. I've literally done the work and I did it for myself as an act of self-love. I only get one chance at life and I want to make sure that I have the ability to move well through life and to have good relationships. I want to be able to give back. I want to be able to teach the things that I have learned along the way too. I remember something my strong fit mentor said to me, Julian Pinot, he said, you know, the goal is to literally kill the old version of Sarah and become a completely new version of Sarah. And that's exactly what I did. I killed the old Sarah. Old Sarah used to be an adolescent and she used to be a victim. This Sarah behaves like an adult and at least has self-awareness into when she's behaving like an adolescent. And she chooses victory every single damn time. So if you need help overcoming sketchy dieting behaviors or faulty painful movement patterns, you know where to find me. I'm not just here on January 1st. I'm here and I'm ready to help you when you're ready to have me help you snap out of it. Anyhow, it feels really nice to be back on YouTube vlogging. I know lots of you wrote to me saying, oh my goodness, we miss your, your YouTube vlogs. Where did you go for the past two years? Well, the truth is I've spent the past two years uh, learning and I updated the Strength Academy and the Splits program just now. It's now version 3.0 and I've been busy taking all of the programs and content off of my old website and putting it into a new platform that's going to be ready to launch any minute now. I'm very excited about that. It's just a much better platform. It's easier to access everything. So that's going to be happening very soon. And I'm excited to be able to create more content and get back on YouTube vlogging. So thank you for watching. And you can let me know in the comments below what it is you want me to vlog about if you have like a specific question. I know some people put in a request for me to talk about Nolly Kriya and the stomach vacuum in the next vlog. So I can do that. And again, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and subscribing.